Good day class, you are welcome to our chemistry online class for this week. Today we'll be looking at solution and solubility. The objective for the class is as follow. At the end of this class, I expect you to be able to describe a solution. You should be able to differentiate between different types of solution. You should be able to explain the solubility of a solute in a solvent at a particular temperature. Also, you should be able to describe a solubility graph and you should be also able to describe the determinants of a solubility curve. Solution. A solution is a uniform or heterogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Thus, a solution has two major parts. You have the solvent and you have the solute part. Take note, the solute is that substance which is dispersed in a solvent. Why the solvent is that substance in which a solute is dispersed inside? Now, either of the two of them, they can take the form of matter which is either solid, liquid or gas. Note, the most common solvent in nature is referred to as water. This is, this is the reason why we refer to water as a universal solvent. Because it can dissolve so many materials in nature. But, however, there are some certain materials which waters cannot dissolve. These materials are dissolved by non-polar solvents. Now, listen, why is, polar, uh, why is water referred to as a polar solvent? Water is referred to as a polar solvent because it has two major parts. It has the positive ion part, which is the hydrogen part, and it has the negative ion part, which is the isozyl ion part. This allows it to be able to dissolve so many materials in nature. Why the, mat why the organic materials, commonly which cannot be dissolved by water, are dissolved by non-polar um, liquids? Example, if you have a oil stain on your dress, you discover that no amount of water can easily remove the oil stain. But when a kerosene is applied to that oil stain, it can quickly dissolve the oil stain and remove it from that protein material. So, organic material which cannot be dissolved by water are usually dissolved by non-polar material. Example, which include your kerosene, your petrol, your benzene, and your turpentine. Types of nature, which you have two major types of nature. One, the true solution and the first solution. The first solution is also known as a colloid solution. What is a true solution? A true solution is that solution which solutes can be easily dispersed in between the solvents. Take note, the solute particles are smaller to the extent that they cannot be seen with the naked eye. And also, the particles of the solute for a true solution can pass through a semi-permeable membrane, unlike the colloid solution in which the particles are larger, but they cannot be seen with the naked eye, and they can not pass through a semi-permeable membrane. Example of true solution is the solution of your, your sodium chloride in water. For example, of your, your first or colloidized solution is your starch. Now, the difference between a true solution and a first solution. The true solution, like I said, they can dilate. That is, the solute can pass through a semi-permeable membrane. Why the first solution? The solution, the, 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 the solution, the solute cannot dilate. They cannot pass through a semi-permeable membrane. If I know that for a true solution, the solute cannot scatter light, so they don't, they don't exhibit a tangier effect. For the colloid, colloid solution, they, they exhibit a tangier effect. That is, the particles of the solute scatter light ray. Types of colloids. We have three major types of colloid. We have the source and gel. We have the aerosols. We have the emulsion. The source and gel is a system in which the the solute is solid, while the solvent is liquid. So you are having a solute be dissolving in a you are having a solid be dissolving in a liquid. A good example is your your glue, your agar, your a your jelly, your jelly, your gelatin, your clays. Now, you find out that when these cells are left standing after some time, they solidify to give you what is known as gels. The aerosols, on the other hand, is a system in which the solvent, part, the solvent material is a gas, while the solute material is a liquid. Solvent is gas, solute is liquid. So you're having a solvent being dispersed inside a gas. A good example is your fogs and smoke, your insecticide. Why the emotion, on the other hand, the solute is liquid, the solvent is liquid. So you're having a liquid being dispersed in another liquid. A good example include your milk, your air cream, and cold liver oil. Examples of colloids. For the fog, the solvent is gas, the liquid is 
the solute is liquid. The smoke, the table is showing that example. Take note that is an example of color, it's not an example of emotion. The smoke in a, is, a, is a system whereby the solvent is gas, the solute is the, the solute is solid. Foams or leather, the solvent is liquid, while the solute is gas. For emulsion, like I said, having liquid, liquid. Why soils? The, the solvent is liquid and the solute is solid. Solubility. What is solubility? The solubility of a solute in a solvent is defined as, as the maximum amount of the solute in most, in most or in gram that will saturate one dm cube of a solvent at a particular temperature. The amount of solutes in most or gram that will saturate one dm cube of solvent at a particular temperature. That is to say, temperature is a function of solubility. That is to say, the same temperature of is, as the temperature of a, of a solution increase, the solubility of the solute in that solution tends to increase. For mathematically, solubility can be defined as mass times 1000, that is 1 dm cube, all over the molar mass of the solute times volume. Where mass is standing for the mass of the solute which is dissolved in the solvent, the molar mass is the molar mass of the solute which is dissolved in the solvent. Why the volume there is the volume of the solvent? As time as we go on with the class, we, we understand this formula better. Take note, solution can take the form of a saturated solution, unsaturated solution, and supersaturated solution. What is a saturated solution? A saturated solution is that solution that contains as much solute as it can hold at a particular temperature. The solvent contains as much solute as it can hold at a particular temperature. In the presence of undissolved solute particles, that is to say, it's just like when you are adding salt to water, you get and you are stirring, you get to a point the water will not be able to take the salt again. Those material, the, the salt particles that cannot dissolve in the water, they will appear as precipitate. So you sh you will be having you will be seeing particles of salt inside that water which are not dissolving. So the the, the solutes of the dissolved the, so, this, the dissolved solutes and the undissolved solutes are at equilibrium because the solvent has taken as much as it can hold at a particular temperature. Why for unsaturated solution is that solution which have a less solute than that a solvent can hold at a particular temperature. That means that the solvent can still take much more solute. For a supersaturated solution, you are looking at a solution that contains much more solute than a solvent can hold at a particular temperature. That is, this is the reason why if that particular solution is dissolved, you find out that the excess solute in that solvent, they will precipitate out of the solution. Determination of solubility. Now, there are two major methods which is very important in determining the solubility of a substance. One, you have to prepare a saturated solution of a given solute at a specified temperature. Two, take a known mass of that saturated solution which is prepared, evaporate to dryness, so that you can analyze what is the mass of the solute in that solu in the solution, what is the mass of the solvent. Now, how is this is done? How is this done? Let's see the example below. We discover that if we prepare a saturated solution of potassium trizonitrate 5 at room temperature, prepare a saturated solution of potassium trizonitrate 5 at room temperature. Stage 2, we now take a sample of that potassium trizonitrate 5. We weigh the mass. And when we weigh the mass, we discover that the mass is 55.27 gram. Then we transfer the, the sample into an evaporating dish. Then we eat it to dryness. At the end of the day, the residue which is left, which is the mass of, uh, of the solute left, potassium trizonitrate is gotten as 11.87 gram. Now, you discover that by the time you remove 11.87 gram from 55.27 gram, which was the mass of the solution taken, that means that the mass of water that has evaporated, that is the solvent that has evaporated, is 43.40 gram. Now, from Relative density, that means that it is the same as 43.40 cm cube 
of water. So the molar mass of potassium transgenitrate 5 is giving us 101 gram. Now, in putting that into the formula, like I said, as we go further, we understand this formula. The mass of the, sol the residue here now is 11.8 gram, which is in that solution I was taking. We input that, multiply by 1,000, 1, which is 1 dm cube, 1 dm cube of a solution, divided by 1.01 times 43.40, which is the, the volume of the solvents used. Now, at the end of the day, we have 2.71 most per dm cube that is to say the solubility of potassium trihydronitrate 5 at room temperature is 2.71 moles per dm cube solubility graph or curve a solubility curve is that is a database graph which helps to compare the amount of a solute that will dissolve in a given amount of a solvent at various temperatures the most typical solubility curve is a graph of base solid and gaseous solid dissolved in 100 grams of water. Now, looking at that graph, you find out that the vertical is showing the solubility that, of, of, of the salts in gram per 100 grams of water, while the, the horizontal is showing the temperature range. Now, if you carefully look at the graph, for sodium chloride, discover that the, the, the temperature has more or less no effect for a, a little bit above 30. Sodium chloride is not showing a rise in um, solubility as you move between a temperature of 100, I mean, the temperature of 0 to 100. For cyanate salt, um, salt CE2SO4, we discover that the, the solubility of cyanate salt as 0 is 20, and between 0 degrees. Um, um, Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius, the solubility is decreasing. But from 30 upward, the solubility remains constant. Now, if you look carefully for potassium chloride, discover that the solubility is increasing constantly with temperature. So, a solubility graph or curve helps us to determine how much of a solute we dissolve in a solvent at a at various temperature. Application of solubility curve. It helps pharmacies to determine the amount of solid drug that must be dissolved in a given quantity of prescribed drug mixture. Two, it enables chemists and research workers to determine the most suitable solvent to be used at various temperature for the extraction of essential chemicals from various natural sources. Number three, with the help of solubility curve, a given mixture of solutes can be separated or purified by fractional distillation. It helps us to, to carry out purifications of material. Assignments. In the last class, only one student submit my assignment. That's Aaron. I'm not happy with you. Please make sure that this assignment for this class is submitted. If you carefully look today, we have revised solution and solubility. You have carefully studied one what is solution the different types of solution we have and the difference between the two solution and four solution and we have also looked at solubility please let's take the assignment for this week this is very very important this class should not be taken for joke number one if 18.2 gram of lead 2,085 we are dissolving 54 gram of distilled water at 50 degrees celsius calculate the solubility of the solute in moles per dm cube. Now, number two, I say what a solubility curve. I state two uses of solubility curve. Number three, what is solubility? Number three, what is solubility? Define the following terms: saturated solution, unsaturated solution, and saturated solution. See, we meet next class. Please try to save, stay safe. Remember the WhatsApp number which you will submit your assignment to. Remains 080-3418-7864. For Arano, for the last assignment, I score you 80%.